Hello everyone and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today I want to discuss a common misconception in the AR-15 world and it has to do with castle nut staking. So staking is when you take the end plate and push material from the end plate into the castle nut to mechanically lock the castle nut in place so it can't spin off or loosen. <clears throat> A lot of people assume when you do this, you have permanently attached this setup to the low receiver in some way, and it makes it extremely difficult to remove this assembly, and that's simply not true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opportunity to destroy this beautiful staking and show you <clears throat> that it is extremely easy to remove a staked castle nut. <clears throat> and this castle nut is not just staked in one place right here. It is also staked there and there. <clears throat> now this is a Sons of Liberty factory assembled lower receiver. You probably can't find better staking anywhere from a factory gun. Maybe next to Colt. They do a fantastic job with their staking. <clears throat> the reason that I'm going to disassemble this, and a lot of people are probably cringing, like, why is he going to do this? Well, the main reason is, is the owner, after I did a summary physical of the lower receiver, I noticed that the receiver extension, and I don't know if it's easy to see here on camera, but the receiver extension is clocked. The bottom is pointing that way. I don't know if it's easy to see it in the video. I'm going to grab a Geisley reaction block. Sometimes that helps put things in perspective. I'm shooting this video solo today. My wife's not feeling well. <clears throat> so if the footage sucks, it's my fault. So, let me see if I can get this. Maybe that makes it a little more obvious right there. It's off slightly. Now, is this a problem? As far as function goes, absolutely not. It's simply a cosmetic issue. But since it's a cosmetic issue and the owner is very particular, he's going to have me install a new end plate and a castle nut if this gets damaged. This being the castle nut, but it won't. <clears throat> and then I'm going to make sure things are perfectly aligned and we're going to stake in three places again. But this video, I'm not going to show me staking. It's going to be simply me removing... The castle nut, and I'm doing this one-handed, so one hand's holding the camera here, so the other one, there's the other one. There's no other people here in the shop with me. <clears throat> so, let's get this wrench on the here. And I'm going to cheat a little bit, since I'm working with one hand. If you butt the Geisley reaction block up, you can't slip off the castle nut. So now what I'm going to do is try to break this staking one-handed, and look at that. That easy. Oh, almost broke the camera. That easy. <clears throat> Not permanent. Now, one thing that I can say about staking is if you do have to perform a procedure like this, where you have to loosen the castle nut after it's been staked, you really can't reuse the castle nut if the castle nut times into the same position it was before. So let's say we tighten this back up and we got here, you couldn't reuse this. But if you got it here, you could, because you could stake in a new spot. Um, it wouldn't be very sightly or appealing looking, um, but you could reuse the end plate. Now the owner does want this new one installed, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to remove a staked castle nut, even when it's staked, staked in three spots by one of the best jobs that is done from a factory outside of Colt. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it educational, and thanks for watching.